We are going to apply the Gauss Jordan elimination for this given matrix in coming up with a reduced row echelon form of this mat said matrix. If this is a uh, representative matrix of a linear system, the reduced row echelon form that is after the Gauss Jordan elimination is a helpful way for us to identify the unknown um, variables or coefficients of the said linear system. In order for us to do that, we are going to apply here some row operations that will allow us to again reach the reduced row echelon form. So our first task here is to come up with um, zero uh, entries for this in this um, portions. So we are going to come up with operations and they are this specific steps. First, we are going to multiply negative 1 to our row 1 and add it to our row 2 to have a new row 2 and this would become 0 later. Same, we are going to multiply negative 1 to our row 1 still and add it to row 3 to reach a new row 3 making this 0 as well. So with that, we are going to have this new version of the same matrix and the first row is still 1, 1, 1, 1 and if we're going to apply the first then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 1 this is 0 okay but we are going to apply the same to all entries of the same row so let's do this negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 2 I have positive 1 next negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 4 I have positive 3 and then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 2 I have positive 1 next for the third row negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 1 it's 0 see we have achieved this goal of making sure that uh, after this leading zero on the first row, all entries of the same column will be zeros. But we are not yet done. Let's apply the same operation to the remaining entries of the same row. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Plus 3, I have 2. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Plus 9, I have 8. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Plus 5, I have here um, a value of four okay so that is the first step next step is since this is already a leading one we don't need to divide or multiply all entries here by a certain number so we just skip with making sure that this next entry be equal to zero so we are going to multiply negative two to our row two add it to our row three to have a new row three and with that this is our new version of the matrix the first row is still one 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 the second row is still zero one three one and the third row will this negative two times zero so it's still zero plus zero it doesn't matter here next our uh, column negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero next negative two times three is negative six plus eight they have positive two and then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 4, another positive 2. Then we are going to make sure that this would be a leading 1. So we are going to multiply all entries or divide all entries. Or again, multiply all entries in row 3 by 1 half or divide all entries by 2. And this, therefore, this is your result. 1, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, and the 2 becomes 1, and the 2 becomes 1. This is the first part of the Gauss-Jordan elimination, known as the forward phase. Uh, and here, this is actually a Gaussian elimination, uh, but since our task is Gauss-Jordan elimination, we are going to apply the remaining backward phase uh, in order for us to get the reduced row echelon form. And if we do that, we are going to uh, make sure that these next entries here, this one here, and this one will become equal to zero. Why? Because this one at the bottom is already the leading one, and for it to be considered as a reduced row echelon form, 
all entries on the same column with the leading zero, uh, leading ones, sorry, rather, would be equal to zero. So to remove three or to make uh, three equal to zero, this is what will happen. We're going to use the, use the backward face. We're going to refer to the third row. We're going to multiply negative three to our third row, add it to our row two for our new row two, making this zero. And for the remaining value, negative one, or entry rather, negative one times row three plus row one will result to a new row one, making this zero as well. So let us have this here. Okay, so the third row is still the same because we did not apply any operations to that aside from it being added to another row. Um, this is still zero here because negative three times zero and then plus zero, it's still the same. So it's zero. This is also one here because when you multiply negative three to zero, it's zero plus one. So it doesn't change the value. What is unique now is what will happen here. See this one. Negative three times one is negative three plus three is zero. Negative three times one is negative three plus one. I have negative two. So for our first row, negative, uh, this is still one again because of zeros here, zeros here. So it won't matter. So it's still one here. So negative one times one is negative one plus one. I have here zero. Negative one times one is negative one plus one, also zero here. The last step is for us to make this zero. And in order for us to do that, we're going to multiply negative one to row two plus row one for, have, for us to have a new row one. And this is what will it look like. So the third row is still zero, zero, one, one. The second row is still zero, one, zero, negative two. This is still one because this is a zero here. And then we continue. Negative one times one is negative one plus one. Now it's zero. Negative one times zero plus zero, zero. Negative one times negative two is positive two plus zero. I have here two. This ends now our process of the Gauss Jordan elimination as we already have a reduced row echelon form. And if we are going to come up with, if this is actually a, a if the given rather matrix is a, is a representative of a linear specific linear system we could say that the first variable let's say it's x sub 1 here is equal to positive 2 x sub 2 is equal to negative 2 and x sub 3 is equal to positive 1 this is only if ever this is really a um uh i mean the given matrix is really a result of uh or is a referred to a given linear system. But either way, this here is our last step for this Gauss-Jordan elimination process. Thank you for watching.